tell me this. What did the coroner say? Like when, okay, you, you get the news, walk us through this. You get the news about Tanner. There's a lot of different stories, a lot of stuff going on. But officially, what did the coroner and the police say? Okay, that morning, um, the coroner came to our house um because we were out there we ran out there we were out there um i would tell you when we did arrive there they were all lined up outside the house in front of the house there was crime tape we were told it was a crime scene um, oh, the wow. officer, yeah we were told it was a crime scene and if you look in the um the um first responder notes the the detectives or the the deputies they mm -hmm. say we it, this um we just they whatever it's a crime scene we decided to call the detectives in because we feel it was a crime scene so they knew it was a crime scene it wasn't just okay. this kid just dropped and so they knew it was a crime scene from the beginning so the family was all lined up outside 10 15 feet apart and they were taken to the sheriff's office in separate squad cars and we were told by the lead detective they did that because um, they didn't want them um, colluding and getting their stories together, formulating a story even more so. Because he already told us, the detective told us that um, they had formulated a story that morning and they, they do not believe them. And so they get there, um, the coroner comes over, he's speaking with our family that, that afternoon and he said that that house, I, we've had a lot of people call that is a known party house. I didn't know. I mean, we didn't know. We didn't know. We just knew that this, sure. we thought they raised our kids like we raised our kids. I mean, you know, here, this is an upper class, um, upper upper middle class home. Like, you know, the, the family, the home's gorgeous. Um, you know, the kids are all popular. Marcus was, you know, class president. And, um, you know, and we just thought that they, they raised their kids like, like we, you know, when his, their kids came over, when Marcus would come over, we didn't allow drinking. We didn't allow all that stuff to go on. So we just figured that's, you know, being naive, I guess I should have, you know, paid more attention to all that, but I did it. And, um, but yeah, they said that that was a highly, Tanner's death is highly suspicious and they will continue to investigate. They're not going to close his case. He said the house looked like there had been a party and he said, um, Michelle, that's an evil, he told our family, that's an evil house. That just, there's evil in that house. That's that's what the coroner told us. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think, like, that's an odd, to me, that's an odd mm -hmm. statement. What do you think he kind of meant? Did you have any idea what he meant by that? I, I just thought it was a bunch of bad people. I mean, I, I didn't, at that point, I didn't know. Now looking back. Um, and all the people, I guess there was half the community called the sheriff's department and said, that is a known party house. Those kids take drugs. They're, you know, they're, they're, they all work at the veterinarian clinic. They all have access oh. to the drugs. Yes. Because that family oh. um, were co-owners of um, one of the veterinarian clinics and Todd Cooney owns his own vet clinic. So they all they all worked in the vet clinic. They all like they would sweep or clean or, you know, help out on weekends. So all of those kids, everybody in that house had access to veterinarian drugs, every single one of them. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. This, this picture is becoming more clear in one of the papers that I've got that he said this was uh, an open investigation. Like he wasn't closing it out and mm -hmm. ruling anything i guess what was the thing that started sending the alarm bells off past the text and calls okay that more okay so i just kept asking um why was a veterinarian called because tommy is the kid who called us which is tanner's very best friend and his dad was um out at that house the night before and we found out that morning that he had lawyered up um, and, you know, he had had a past addiction to ketamine and he had been to, he lost his license for seven years to, to his addiction of ketamine. They found him at his house unresponsive. Um, he, he had to do drug rehab twice. He'd just gotten his DA license back like in August of uh, 2011 and Tanner passed in April of 2012. Wow. So he just, yeah. And so there was, um, there's a lot, there's uh, drugs that were missing from the clinic. We got, we got the, the owner actually is the one who 
contacted me and I'll jump, I'm not going to jump forward that yet. Let me just finish this that week. Okay. Um, that week, uh, it was, we had a meeting with the, the coroner, the detective and the pathologist. And they said in all their years combined, they have never seen a perfectly healthy 19 year old kid just collapse and die for no reason. And we didn't understand, uh, we're like, white. there's my sister who is a naturopath, um, a holistic doctor, mm -hmm. she kept saying, no, there's got to be something in the system. This is like SIDS. Kids, 19-year-old kids don't just lay there and die right. um, from SIDS. You tell us what's in his system. We, there's nothing in his system. We don't have anything. So then how can you say he just died from positional asphyxia and his heart was secondary, but they said it wasn't his heart. They said it was not his heart that caused him to die. But whatever caused his positional asphyxiation, well, um, we just we just kept going on and they wouldn't, you know. It, 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 from the beginning it was, we started seeing um, things starting to like cover up. 